Welcome back, everyone. It is Sleep Awareness Week, and our next guest is here to talk about a surprising reason why you or your child may be tired all the time. Welcome back, Dr. Raj. Welcome, Welcome back, back, Dr. Dr. Raj. Great to have you. Always happy to be here. This is all <laughs> super fascinating information. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. I think we all feel tired sometimes, yeah. but how do you know? How do you know if it's just like we need to hit the snooze button another right. time or if it's could be something else? No well, let's start off with that snooze button. Right. You know what happened last weekend? Daylight, Daylight savings. Daylight Someone just stole my hour from me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there were a lot of people, you don't have to raise your hands, who was hitting that snooze yeah, button. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Of course, of course. <laughs> but you know, when you ask me what do I think about the snooze button, it's kind of like a bandage. A bandage for what? Maybe an underlying sleep disorder. Ones that present with excessive daytime sleepiness, being tired, being fatigued during the day. Yeah. So what can do that? Maybe sleep apnea, maybe insomnia. But what about narcolepsy? And that's why I partnered with Jazz Pharmaceuticals and MoreThanTired.com to raise an awareness about disorder that I am super passionate about, which is narcolepsy. Wow. So, you know, speaking of narcolepsy, we were talking about this a little earlier. Yeah. Growing up, you always thought narcolepsy was, I'm driving home from work and suddenly I fall asleep. A very Hollywood of you. Well, but you know, very that's Hollywood. what people always told you're you. Right. Or you're, you're sitting right. here at the table, Dr. Yeah. Raj is talking, and I fall asleep. Is that, what Don't is, do that. I won't. Okay. You're not boring, my friend, okay. I promise. <laughs> but what is narcolepsy exactly? So is that me, what it is? I got some points there. So okay. number one, it's not as uncommon as you think. You know, and it's definitely underdiagnosed, it's misdiagnosed, and the numbers are one in 2,000 people in the United States have narcolepsy. Wow. So, step back, mm. how do I define what it is? It's a chronic neurological disorder where there's dysregulation of the sleep and wake cycle. So people okay. with narcolepsy have attacks of sleep during the day, so when they need happen. to be awake. Right. During work, during school, during home and family. Same, and then at same. nighttime, and then at nighttime, they have multiple awakenings at night. So it's a vicious cycle. But the one thing I just told myself, I'll make a point about, narcolepsy is not just a disease of adults. Children, adolescents can get narcolepsy. In fact, 50% of patients who have narcolepsy tell me they have symptoms before the age of 18, which oh is why goodness. it's so important to raise awareness to get the diagnosis earlier. Wow. Okay, so yep. you, you mentioned the symptoms. What are some of the major <clears throat> symptoms? Because I know there's things yeah. that we can look for here. Yes, they're actually the big five, and we'll kind of go most of them today, but let me spend the most time on the most important, excessive daytime sleepiness. This is the most debilitating. This okay. is why patients see a sleep specialist. But when we talk about how does that present in children, it's different. Kids can articulate themselves. So when they're in school and they're napping, they get thought of as lazy. Right. That leads to depression. Or you think they're just tired and they're, yeah. they, you know, they need to sleep. They need to nap. That's exactly. what you think. Exactly. exactly. They get misdiagnosed with anxiety. And what about if they're hyperactive? You know mm -hmm. what diagnosis they get sometimes? ADHD, ADD. Mm -hmm. And that's why the way they present in kids is so important to recognize it, to make that right diagnosis. Man. So it could, hyperactivity could actually be part of narcolepsy. Uh, it, you know, it gets, it gets confused. Oh, and that's why many goodness. people get that wrong diagnosis up front and the treatment is different. Okay. Well, yeah. it also can affect our muscle tone, I understand as it well. It can, it can. How and, so? Well, the word we're gonna talk about is cataplexy. And what is cataplexy? It's a sudden loss of muscle tone when you're exposed to intense emotions, laughter and crying and anger and what happens is not like Hollywood where it has to be a full body you know your face just right. flops in a bowl of like yeah. lucky charms right. and cereals everywhere it could be subtle it could be a buckling of the knee weakness of the hand when I'm grabbing this cup over here but let's go back to the kids how does uh, cataplexy present in kids around the face drooping of the jaw drooping of the eye their speech gets uh, like like a little bit slurred you know and in fact in the pediatric literature we call that cataplectic faces Oh my yeah. goodness. So many, uh, good points here that yeah. you're making. Now, people with narcolepsy also tend to have very vivid dream like experiences as well. They Tell do. us about these. So, if you're falling asleep and you get these visual hallucinations, I gotta tell you, number one, the medical word is hypnagogic hallucinations. And they're not the dreams of like cute little puppy dogs and kittens. Oh, they're scary. There's like wow. images of people standing in the room. Oh. And then, once again, the poor kids wanna tell their mom and dad about it mm. and they can't express themselves. So, they, mom and dad are like, it's a night. Mm -hmm. It's a night tear. And I wonder if this is where that saying came from. There's a monster in the closet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. Wow, for years this has gone misdiagnosed, it yeah. seems like. There's also another symptom that affects movement and speech as well. Yes, and that's sleep paralysis. Let me just start off with that's this. That's scary. Can you raise your hand if you've ever had sleep paralysis? I've definitely had it. Yeah, yes, I, I have, see someone yeah. at home raising their hand on the TV already. Yeah. And it, it's the most common cause is sleep, sleep deprivation. But in the right setting, it may be one of those symptoms of narcolepsy. And what is sleep paralysis? There's a disconnect between the brain and the body. The brain is awake. 
but the body is stuck in REM sleep. And what happens in REM sleep? You're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And that's wow. why people are like, is there someone sitting on my chest? I can't breathe right. because in REM sleep, your breathing gets very shallow. You're predisposed to obstructive sleep apnea. And now ask me the question about the visual hallucinations. Yeah. This is why you have them because your body is like, wake up. And that's why they see these scary images oh, to goodness. get you to move. I mean, this, is, this is all pretty serious stuff because yeah. disrupted nighttime sleep can have a major impact, does have a major yes. impact on, yeah. our, on our life, doesn't it? It does. And you know, this is one of those myths of narcolepsy, which is people with narcolepsy are sleeping all the time. Right. That's the furthest thing from the truth. People with narcolepsy don't need any more or any less sleep than people like me and you who don't have the disorder. But can you imagine waking up at night all the time that, you know, I have two beautiful kids. Yeah. Hey, Aiden. Hey, Mina. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and there are times where they actually wake up at night. I'm worried. Are they sick? Am I a bad parent? And people with narcolepsy they're waking up all the time with their kids. It's tough mm. on the parents, tough on the patients. That's another symptom. Right, and mm. then the parents may think that they have narcolepsy because they're up all night, so they're exhausted during <laughs> the day. You said I mean, that. Even though you may not have it, yeah. the truth matter is, this yeah. is a very hard disease to diagnose. It is. Isn't that true? You know, let me give you some numbers. It takes, there's a 10 year delay in making the diagnosis. Oh my god. That goodness. wasn't an error on my part. I mean 10 years. And it takes an average of six doctors to make the correct diagnosis. So during our time together. astounding. No, it, no, it still so blows me away every time I say it. Yeah. And you know, we discussed today that whether it's gonna be children, whether it's gonna be adults, they have the same signs and symptoms, but the way they present is different. Okay. And that's why I'm so happy that we raised awareness today on Home yes. and Family. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. doing a great job. It's and really some, some great resources that people can have out there for more information, yeah. where can they go? I'm gonna say that if you think you have narcolepsy, your children, a loved one, go to morethantire.com. It's an amazing website. Number one, that they have a screening questionnaire not just for adults, but for children mm -hmm. too. They have amazing patient testimonials there, but I think the most important thing they have is a physician finder, someone who's familiar with the disorder right. to put you on the right direction for your journey. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Raj, Raj, you said you were passionate about this, <laughs> and man, you weren't kidding, everybody. Thank you, Thank you so for being much. here.